Good evening. This is Robert Williams uh, coming to you via our social media outlets. Uh, those of you who like us on Facebook and follow us, those of you who have subscribed to us on YouTube, God bless you and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Uh, we just praise the Lord for this opportunity to share the word of uh, the Lord with you. We thank you for my church life, my uh, straight life family. Praise the Lord. Uh, I've had the opportunity to call around and check on everybody. And to a person, everybody's just, uh, just excited about when we can get back together again in fellowship uh, like we, we've been accustomed to in the past. God is good. God has it all in control. And uh, we're just going to hunker down right here where we are and have church. Amen. Amen. Holla if you hear me. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We certainly will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Uh, we're sending out prayers this afternoon. We have several members who are convalescing at home. Uh, some, we got one member who's in the hospital. Uh, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Want you to join us and follow us again Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning at the 1030 hour. Again, this coming Sunday, the 12th, we will observe the Lord's uh, communion. Make sure you have your crackers and juice and uh, we're going to have a high time in the Lord. Praise the Lord for last Sunday. My God, my God, the glory of God was in the house. And uh, we have some exciting things planned. I was uh, checking uh, my email and uh, text messages, and the saints at Straight Life got awesome things planned. Uh, I was uh, tuning in, and people are talking about uh, starting different kinds of ministry to help the homeless, uh, to feed those who are not able to take care of themselves, uh, just all kinds of help ministries. God bless you. God bless you, Straight Life. Amen, amen. You will be rewarded for all the things that you do uh, to advance the kingdom. I want to talk uh, out of the scriptures tonight. Uh, my mind has been on that bitter cup, the bitter cup that we've all had to partake of here lately. And indeed, it is a bitter cup. So if you will turn your Bibles with me to Mark, the 14th chapter, and uh, verse 32. St. Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 32. In just a few minutes in God's word, write a comment. If, if something is said that you like, write a comment. If something said that you don't like, uh, write a comment. Amen. Help us. Uh, it's been very help, helpful and very inspirational. And uh, we thank God for our social media uh, at Straight Life. And uh, I tell you, uh, Robert Williams Jr., even though he's my son, I got to give him kudos. Doing an awesome job. The Lord has anointed this ministry, and we're just so thankful to come to you uh, in the manner in which we are today. Look at St. Mark 14, 32. I want you to begin reading with me at verse 32. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and said unto Peter, Simon, sleepeth thou. Simon, sleepeth thou. Could have not thou watched one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. 
The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest, it is enough. The hour is come, behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And I want to talk about life's bitter cup. And I know I'm not talking to anybody out there who has not experienced some bitter cups. I mean, we, 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 matter of fact, matter of fact, we're in a bitter cup situation right now. If, if, if you, you read your newspapers, uh, looking at the uh, news, whether it's six o'clock news, morning news, all of us can agree on one thing. We're, we're drinking that bitter cup and the cup is very, 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 very bitter. Uh, Jesus has retreated and notice where he retreats to. I mean, he's retreating to a place of quiet, sublime, uh, private, you know, just like some kind of resort, just getting away from it all. Is there anybody out there ever just want to just get away? Don't want to go away mad. I just want to go away. And sometimes in ministry, we get like that. I get like that. I want to be left alone. And I, I'm talking to somebody out there right now. You, you want to be left alone sometime. And that's the way Jesus was. He wanted to be left alone. And he decided to take with him Peter, James, and John. Notice in ministry how the emphasis is on people you can trust. People you can trust. You need to be comfortable and relaxed enough to know that the person on your left and the person on your right got your back. Whoever is involved in ministry has your back. Part of the bitter cup is the uneasiness of the cup, the mistrust of the cup, not knowing what the next moment is going to bring. Uh, not being comfortable with the expected pain and agony that's in the cup. So you need to be in a quiet place. And the place that he decided to go was the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane was located at the base of the Mount of Olives. And uh, the Mount of Olives was about 3.1 miles from Jerusalem. If I got to walk to the Mount of Olives, it's going to take me an hour because I walk slow. But if you, you know, walk pretty good, you can get there probably in 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Driving, you're talking two or three minutes. So the, the, the point is, Mount of Olives is not far, but it's a way to a quiet place to, to ease the pain, to ease the agony. So let's, let's follow Jesus as he's going out of town. I don't know what they're talking about. I, I don't know what conversation is being shared among the four of them. Remember, you got Peter, you got James, and you got John. Remember, he's already said to Peter, uh, when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded to Peter, Flesh and blood, it's over there in uh, Matthew 17, somewhere in there. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, Peter is sort of inching on back up, fell out of grace a little bit because Peter, you know, would say things. And, uh, you know, that's where it is. If, if you will, if you're very, very uh, outspoken and you're willing to say stuff off the cuff, then pretty soon you're going to mess up. So that's, that's my man, Peter. Uh, but Jesus had that confidence that Peter was someone he could trust. James uh, and John, the sons of Zebedee, were others that he felt like he could trust while they were watching and praying for him. He was going away in solitude, trying to connect with the Father. Notice, notice what happens 
as he gets off in solitude, began to pray to the Father. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Peter, James, and John, all three of them have fallen asleep. And these are the people that you're confiding in because the cup brings out ministry. And the ministry that he has given them is twofold, watch and pray. Watch and pray. So every ministry needs those persons who the Lord has anointed to be watchmen over the house. Watch the pastor. Watch the first lady. Just be watchmen. You may not have a title at all, but God has given you a spirit that watches over the ministry. How do you watch over the ministry? Down on your knees, praying. Praying for that man of God. Praying for that woman of God. Father, watch over them. Father, cover them with the blood of Jesus. And that's a term we don't use as much as we used to. When I was a little boy coming up in the sanctified church, you wouldn't go in a service without hearing the blood of Jesus. Cover them with the blood. Cover Hundreds of times I had hands laid on me and the words that came out of the person who was praying, the word that came out of their mouth was cover him with the blood. And I feel good being covered uh, with the blood of Jesus. So he's here at Gethsemane. He's at the foot of the Mount of Olives. Again, the setting is serene, serenity, peacefulness. The Mount of Olives, why is it called the Mount of Olives? There, there, there's a mountain covered, the base of the mountain is covered with olive trees. And you know from the olive tree, they get the olives and crush it in the oil. And we, we have uh, olive oil in the church. We use it for anointing oil. So that's the significance of the Mount of Olives. And again, it's, it's very, very close to Jerusalem. They could get there in a heartbeat. So you got a great setting. Uh, he has uh, his inner circle with him, Peter, James, and John. And now he's praying. Notice what he's praying. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. The thing that I'm headed for, I don't want to do. Has anybody ever been in ministry or God have ever, you felt like God was calling you into something that you really not feeling it? Pastor told me to be over this. What? I'm not feeling it. You don't want to go and tell the pastor that you're not feeling it. But down in your spirit, you just don't see it. And here, here's Jesus. Down in his spirit, I know you the son of God. I know you Jehovah Jireh. I know you're Jehovah Nisi, all those names of Jehovah. And, and whatever we can ascribe to Jesus, those, those are names of God. But uh, right now, Jesus is not feeling it. Right now, we hear Jesus saying, if it is possible, let this cup, and we say bitter, some, some, some verse, versions uh, of scripture say bitter, but here it says, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. We're in an era right now where the will of God is being manifested, not just in Decatur, not just in Georgia, not just in the United States, it's being manifested all over the world. The will of God is being manifested. And somebody said the devil brought it, and but God could have stopped it. Regardless of who brought it, God could have stopped it. And God is, to me, is telling us something. It's a message from God. And I see the, the message of the gospel getting out all over the world. When this message of the gospel shall have gone into all of the nations of the world, then will the end come. That's the scripture. Well, how is that going to happen? We, we've been lazy. We preached the my four and no more. And then the gospel doesn't really get out like it, like it should. Now, everybody's screaming. Mega churches have been scream, uh, streaming. Uh, even now, the smaller churches are streaming. So the word is readily readily going out. So one, I thank God for the bitter cup. I don't like the bitter cup. 
I don't like being here in my living room and not a straight life, but thank God for the middle cup. Somebody holler. Thank God for the bitter cup. We need this bitter cup. So we got the setting. I said that was serene. Uh, uh, private, quiet. Uh, we got his three uh, disciples who are in his inner circle. And now we got him praying. Now, a funny thing happens. Jesus gets up from praying, come back to the disciples and says, could you not watch one hour with me while I go yonder and pray? He does that not one time. I remember LeBron James and Dwayne Wade saying not one, not two, but three. So it's something about the repetition of what he was doing. Not one time, not two times, but three times he gets up, interferes with his own prayer, goes back to the disciples and say, could you not watch with me one hour while I go young and pray? And he said these words, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh, the flesh, somebody repeated out there, the flesh is weak. Is anybody besides me realize that the flesh is weak? I know you've been saved all your life and I know you got all kind of accolades and everything, but guess what? Your flesh is weak too. Paul said, when I would do good, over there in Romans 7, he said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. There's an evil spirit out there to stop us and to hinder us. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about Ephesians 2, uh, where the Lord says, and Ephesians 2 and 2, for we walk after the according to the course of this world, according to the desires of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Uh, and then it talks about the prince of the air, according to the prince of of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So a lot of times things come upon us, the cup becomes even more bitter when we are disobedient. Watch one hour while I go over here and pray. That, that was the directive. But the flesh said go to sleep. Hey, y'all go on to sleep, go on to sleep, don't worry about it, ain't nobody but Jesus. And that's the way we are. And you got Bible study. Uh, you got choir rehearsal. You got Sunday school, but the flesh said, uh, let them handle it. It's all right. It's all good. God understands. God knows you're weak. When are we going to wake up and recognize that to obey is better than to sacrifice? So finally, Jesus said, it's over. Y'all get up. Come on. Uh, the hour is come. And so he satisfies the call of the bitter cup. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close. I'm, I'm, I'm on to something here. He satisfies the call of the bitter cup. When you turn that cup up, it's something down in that cup that's calling you. It's calling you to go out there on Golgotha Hill and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, that's a, that's a special calling. But that's Jesus. What about you and I? What about Robert Williams? What about Straight Life Church? We have a special calling. And to get, and to, get to the call and to satisfy the call, we got to drink the bitter cup. Straight Life, I thank you. Turn up that cup. Keep on turning it up because in the cup, is deliverance. In that cup is victory. In that cup is joy. Hey, my God. In that cup is joy unspeakable and full of glory. I thank God for you. And I believe pretty soon we're going to be right back at 4228 Glen Haven Drive in Decatur, Georgia. But right about now, I'm right here in my living room and I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm going to see you Sunday morning at 1030. Don't forget your crackers and juice. We're going to have communion. Uh, 
Sister Shantavia is doing some things with the with our for our Easter celebration and uh, our children's ministry. So uh, stay tuned. We have some calling post things that we'll get to you. But God bless you. Let us keep enjoying Jesus. Amen. In spite of our bitter cups, God is still victorious. God is still on the throne. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>